Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I configure uh, Kira to receive my S9 Plus from Sunglu. Uh, I'm using version 5.7.1 as you can see here. Uh, and for those using Kira or even other slices, it's not really easy to find a profile from uh, Sunglu. So I'm going to show you how to add one. So if you go into printer uh, here, add printer under settings, this will pop up. And then obviously you, you select a non-automaker printer and then add a non-networked printer as well. On the list, you see there is not even a single um, printer from Sunglu. So it, it makes people think, oh, what should I do if I buy an S9 Plus? So that doesn't matter too much. The most important things are actually the, the settings, which I'm going to cover last. Uh, but setting up the printer basically just tells the slicer uh, the dimensions of it. So if you go into Creality, the CR10, it's close enough and I'm going to show you exactly what you need to change. So just rename it as you wish, it doesn't need to put a Sunglo S9 Plus, but I'm keeping it here just to make it simple. If you click Add, and then you go on to this page. So this is where you tell uh, the slicer, your machine settings, and the, sli the, the, the one from Creality is good because you already have the start and the NG code, so if you want to edit and add any other command from the, at the beginning or at the end of your print, this is the area where you should be doing it, I'm not gonna touch this right now. Uh, here in the right hand side is the most important thing, uh, the reason why I've selected the CR10, so the print head settings are very much the same, all it changes is the dimensions of the bed, so you just need to edit the X and Y to T310, 310. That's the, basically the only difference between this and the CR10. All the rest can be used and kept the same. And here at the bottom, if you want to change the G-code style, I will keep it to Marlin because it's my favorite one. And here on Extruder, uh, I'm also not gonna change because everything is pretty much the same as the CR10. So if you click Next, you have already a setup slicer for your Sunglo S9 Plus. That's that easy. Now, if you start from the, the standard quality uh, profile from, from Cura itself, uh, it's a very good starting point. So I'm gonna go one by one. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna skip the layer height here because that's the topic that I want to talk about a little bit later. Uh, but what you want to see is probably here in the walls. I like to keep this scene hidden. So if you type uh, in this, search bar if you go for C instead of user specific I like to keep it to the sharpest corner that avoids you having those little blobs when you change the the, um, the layer you notice here the option wasn't in the original list so I had to search if you right click and keep the setting visible it will now become part of your original list so you don't need to search for that every single time so I, I tend to, to keep the uh, settings that I like to change in the front page so see now it's part of the the original list uh, I also like to bump the wall line counts to three just to make the the walls a little bit thicker give me a little bit more rigidity in my prints uh, the top and bottom layers they are function of your layer height so I'm not gonna touch this right now I usually don't do monotonic or irony for uh, non square prints and the infill I prefer either the zigzag or the geroid because they're the fastest ones, uh, I'll keep it zigzag, and I always tend to do very, very um, low amount of infill because it really just acts as a little bit of support for the print itself. The material will be a function of the filament that you're using. I'll keep this uh, as a default for now. PLA should be fine with 250. Uh, and the speed, I bumped the speed up to 75, and initial layer, probably half of it, like 30 or 35, I'll start it slow, I'm not gonna gain much on the first layer anyway. Uh, and if you select the jerk control, you will see everything else comes uh, activated uh, underneath the, the front page, so you, if you want to change any, any jerk settings, uh, you can do that later on, so just changing the first one changes all the others, that's the, the main jerk one. Uh, and the other one that I like to change is acceleration. That also depends, depends printer to printer. Uh, as you see, it wasn't enabled. I'll keep that one uh, and I'll bump that up a little bit because I think the Sunlo is capable of doing a little bit more than uh, 500. I think I'm gonna go for uh, 600. 
and that should give me maximum acceleration in my uh, firmware. Now going back to the main page and keep going in order here. So after the speed, you will have the, the travel. And again, let's double check everything is active. So retraction, uh, I think it's a must. So I always do retraction and retract a change layer. Uh, you need to tune that by yourself, but these are the settings that I find decent on my on my printers, and I also like to keep the Z-Hop uh, enabled so I don't clash with the print even if I have a bit of a Z-Offset error. Um, and then you can get the speed and only enable that over the printed part, so it doesn't matter too much if it's not uh, over the printed parts. And I'll just keep that at least at, at the same height as one layer height. <laughs> at 0 0.2 here. Moving on to uh, the next one, so it's always a pain that it resets to the top. Cooling, also a function of your material and if you have any, any cooling mods, uh, I like to keep this minimum layer time as well uh, set because you might be a bit too fast and you're not cooling down properly before you start moving on to the next layer, so 5 seconds should be enough and uh, next one supports obviously depends on the geometrical form of the print that you're doing but for figures always a almost a must for every single figures that i've printed so i always like to keep it in in the tree support structure and the overhang is also a function of your your cooling capability 65 is my default but i might need to tweak that uh, later on depending on what needs to get uh, supported or not uh, another important factor is the support density that you see here. Uh, I usually don't use it very high because it's basically just a waste of uh, filament and time. So it's set already as a default for zero. I'm just going to leave that to 1% and move on to the next settings uh, when it's here in the first uh, layer. Build plate adhesion. Um, because of all the tiny little um, support uh, that sometimes forms in the platform. I like to keep that uh, as a brim, but again, depending on your on your uh, geometry, you don't really need to use a brim. It's just to uh, help securing uh, the parts of the build place uh, until the end. That's pretty much it. If you look at the basic form of your slicer, now uh, there was a one missing the coasting is here under experimental, so I like to keep that. Uh, enable as well. I don't change any settings. I just use the uh, standard ones and That's pretty much the end of the important um, Ones I'm gonna go back to layer height now uh, So you can also change the way or the amount of parameters you see in the list So you see experimental and some other modes in here um, I'm not gonna cover them all um, but if you would like me to explain or release a video in any specific um, setting please drop me a, a comment i'll be more than happy to try and explain uh, in which cases i should be using uh, each one of the settings so going back to the layer height which is the topic i wanted to cover a little bit in more detail so the layer height obviously is the uh, height that each layer will be printed um, and that influences a lot what will be the quality and the uh, strength of your uh, print itself. So top and bottom will be a function of that. So if you put like one millimeter, uh, obviously five layers will give you that one millimeter at 0.2. So that, that's why you change the, the thickness in terms of um, the, 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 the parameter in the thickness already changes the number of layers that you want to achieve. So if you change obviously your layer high, you also have a difference in the number of layers that you're going to have to achieve the same one millimeter. So here in, as an example, 0 0.1, I will need 10 of them. Because I like the maximum details and check my other videos where I explain this very, very uh, detailed, um, 0 0.08 is my preferred one for figures. So obviously that increases a lot the printing time and because of that I tend not to do a lot of um, uh, top and bottom layers so this is why I configure that to be slightly less so it's still 0 0.1, 0 0.8 millimeters still not very thin but at least saves me a little bit of time especially in the bottom ones if it's too flat so that's a, a quick tip to save a little bit of time and filament 
Now the last thing you need to do is to click in the, the disk save and then you can save that as a new custom profile. Uh, I will be saving that as uh, my um, figures slicing for the S9 Plus. So just name it as you wish and there you go. Every time you need to use the profile it's going to be already saved and configured for uh, your needs. It's going to be part of the, the list here at the top. So as usual just load an STL. And I'm going to be using this uh, very nice scoped from uh, Wicked 3D. I'll leave their uh, Patreon link in the description. And as usual, you'll see here all the reds are the areas that are over that overhang, overhang threshold that I set. So uh, like I did in my other videos, I like to remove the snap location, uh, rotation sorry, and then reposition that so I will not have a lot of scaring of the uh, supports in the areas that I care the most. So here in this example, here at the joint, I don't care about the joint, I will be gluing that later, it's gonna be hidden, so I can support that area without any problems, and I'll try to avoid the, uh, the main face as much as I can. So tilting the model and positioning is critical for a nice um, support orientation and minimal scarring. I think I'm happy with it now. If you click slicing, you'll see it will take a little bit of time for each slice, but um, just clicking preview, you'll be able to eyeball if it looks okay. I think there is a bit of too much support that will not be doing much, like this, for example. Uh, I don't think this is supporting anything, so in the interest of saving time, and a little bit of filament, I will be blocking those supports. And the way I use to do that is going back to your um, list. In the support act uh, section, I increase the overhang a little bit. So that usually uh, makes the, uh, the red areas, you see here, uh, they disappear a little bit so the, the areas are a lot smaller it's not doing much so I don't really go much over 70 I think 70 is, is my maximum uh, and my last resort if I really can change that just by the um, the overhang setting is adding support blockers so I'm just gonna be clicking that here and trying to eliminate those supports that will be just wasting time uh, it's not gonna be supporting anything so Everywhere that is red and, uh, and I don't want a support, I just block it with the tiny little blocks. You could also um, resize a single block to cover the area that you want, but I find this a little bit uh, simple and easier to do. Just keep clicking and support tiny individual areas like I'm doing here. And once again, slice the show. Uh, I've saved not, not much, uh, maybe an hour or so. But um, yeah, I think it's irrelevant for the, the print itself. It was already well optimized. I don't have a lot of supports. So yeah, I might want to get rid of those as well. But I think for now, I'm just going to leave it and save it to the disk. If you, look, if you want to have a look on the inside, how the infill is, like I said, I usually don't put a lot of infill because it basically just acts as a support for the uh, outer walls and here all, always you have the breakdown of uh, what times you're spending for each of the characteristics always really nice to understand and try to save time if you want to so send it out to the printer this is a little time lapse for you to see the printing in real time and then the next day manage to pick that up and you can see very very nice print there's a little bit of stringing there that I can fix with the retraction or maybe my bolding tube is a little bit loose, but nothing that uh, a little bit of a uh, light sanding will not remove. Thanks for watching. See you next time.